So Jean Piaget was one of the, the main early uh, you know, pioneers in the field of development. And he kind of really laid out a set of stages and more modern work really questions the extent to which it's useful to call these stages. Uh, a lot of people got kind of hung up on, you know, is this like a, a really discrete process or is it more of a just a kind of continuous process with these different kind of phases maybe of development? Uh, and that's kind of the more modern understanding. But nevertheless, as always, with our desire for compression and simplification, these stages make it a nice, simple story to tell. Uh, and as we're saying, then, uh, just like we said here, uh, the early stages are characterized by Piaget as these kind of sensory motor stages, uh, learning how to perceive, learning how to act at the most basic level. So this A, not B task that we talked about um, and you can see the video on is a char characterized as a developing understanding of object permanence, that the object kind of continues to exist even when you can't see it. And this ability to recognize kind of familiar people then makes you uh, anxious around strangers. So these are some of the actual behavioral manifestations of these early developmental processes. There are many, many more, but that's just some examples. And then uh, this next sort of stage or phase here uh, going up until about six or seven years old is known as the pre-operational. And uh, ultimately everything is about this kind of quote unquote operational. And what, me what it means according to Piaget uh, about being operational really corresponds to the development of this kind of neural CPU that we talked about in the thinking chapter. And this is ultimately this ability to use kind of symbolic, abstract understanding representations of the world and kind of compute things and, and perform cognitive operations in this more abstract way uh, on these kind of symbolic representations of some sort. Um, and that's what the ultimate step here at the bottom is this quote unquote formal operational is the ultimate kind of pinnacle in Piaget's framework uh, where you can kind of do this kind of abstract reasoning about stuff, right? And so all these further steps here are characterized essentially as steps along the way towards that kind of more abstract high level cognitive ability. So, uh, you know, the ability to use words and images to represent other things is basic symbolic representational ability. Uh, and rather than using kind of logical reasoning here, uh, kids are sort of still using more kind of intuitive perceptually driven kind of reasoning. Uh, one uh, very, uh, amusing uh, property here is that you take a, a cup of water uh, in different shapes and you sort of, you know, one tall, narrow glass over here and one wide uh, glass over here. And, you know, if you pour the, the stuff from the wide glass into the tall, narrow glass, it looks like there's more water in there, but you know, it's just the same water. You just poured it, right? So logically, it's got to be the same but perceptually it looks like there's more water in this tall, thin glass and kids, you know, until about six or seven years old, they're kind of fooled by that. They're like, oh yeah, there's more water in that tall glass. Um, and so that's one of the, the kind of experimental demonstrations of this transition then after that point where you sort of say, well, logically that has to be the same amount of water even though it looks different. Uh, and then, uh, so this phase here from seven to 11 is this kind of concrete operational where we have some ability to do kind of con uh, abstract reasoning, but it's not fully abstract. It's more tied to these kind of concrete uh, knowledge. And if we go back again to the thinking chapter and think about the Wason card selection task, that shows us that in fact, everybody still is always tied to these kind of concrete uh, representations of the real world, uh, this notion that we really have a strong abstract symbolic reasoning ability is only kind of just the very highest tip level of, of our iceberg of cognition. Uh, and really most of it is fundamentally this more concrete uh, perceptual sensory motor foundation that we build on um, pervades all of our thinking. This step is kind of one step along the way. Uh, you can measure of mathematical understanding in, in these concepts. Uh, you can do some amount of abstraction, but not completely. And then again, uh, this formal operational is kind of uh, this high level, more abstract principled kind of reasoning, uh, rule governed, et cetera.
Okay, so that gives you a kind of flavor of you know the the, the, the relative time points and the development of these kind of cognitive milestones of development. Uh, Erickson is widely known for, for describing a kind of parallel uh, trajectory of psychosocial development. So more about kind of our overall social kind of sense of self and how we fit in with the social environment, all the stuff we talked about in the last chapter. Uh, and there we can see similar kinds of themes, uh, sort of this, this uh, process going towards this sense of identity that happens in adolescence, uh, this really strong focus on figuring out your, your kind of place in society. Um, and uh, earlier, you know, you're, you're basically kind of in your family environment and, and exhibiting these kind of more basic kind of developmental processes, you know, becoming competent, getting a sense of individual competency and ability to do things. Um, you know, actually taking initiative and, and having kind of your own sense of self-control uh, and that kind of emerging in this early toddler time period going up into, uh, you know, higher levels there. And, uh, you know, start out basically just uh, with this sort of, you know, this is in the context of these kind of secure attachment type of things, uh, this basic trust of your parental units. Once you kind of figure out your identity in adolescence, then you have, you know, this slow decline <laughs> into old age, um, which, you know, you get uh, obviously more kind of relationship focus and uh, starting a family, caring for other people, uh, you know, being somebody who's a productive member of society. And then, you know, basically, how do you withstand the, the, the challenges of aging, et cetera? Uh, and yeah, and you have all these kind of negative poles down here. So all the all the bad stuff that can happen at each of these different stages. Uh, so, you know, this this kind of sense of, you know, competence here, this basic, you know, where am I on the 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 ranking in terms of, you know, am I a relatively competent or not competent person, the sense of inferiority, uh, different kinds of basic uh, states there. And it's also important to emphasize that development as it's used scientifically does actually refer to the entire lifespan of development, even though it often focuses on these earlier stages. People who study aging are also sometimes considered to be developmental. Kohlberg's version of these um, developmental timelines is also closely related to Maslow's uh, pyramid. Uh, this kind of more basic level stuff happening down here at the bottom of the pyramid, uh, kind of more medium level stuff that builds on that, uh, that is known as conventional in the context of Kohlberg's terminology. And this is conventional means kind of like what a typical adult might exhibit. And so these include kind of uh, respect for law and order, uh, this ability to function in the broader society because you obey the laws and you uh, fit in uh, and you know seeking of social approval. So that's the kind of forces and mechanisms that drive this kind of overall social uh, level interaction. And then this kind of more high level abstract kind of, you know, uh, self-actualization kind of equivalent in the um, Maslow hierarchy, uh, otherwise known as post-conventional in the Kohlberg context, uh, this kind of more enlightened high level abstract understanding of, you know, the nature of social order, et cetera. And so this ability to go beyond just kind of basic uh, punishment and, uh, you know, basic fitting in social level stuff to, to, to really kind of seeing the, the, the higher level principles. Uh, and then pre-conventional is behaviorist level conditioning, you know, punishment and reward shaping of behavior according to basic outcomes. So that's kind of the foundation there. So this would be kind of like an animal level of punishment, reward, basal ganglia, dopamine kind of uh, learning. And then on top of that, you have these kind of social forces that we've talked about as being so important and so kind of uniquely uh, emphasized in human uh, cognition. Uh, and hate has uh, a similar kind of uh, set of uh, dichotomies and, and forces that he's identified that's very consistent with the Kohlberg uh, approach here uh, in terms of this kind of reward and punishment at the basis. Uh, and then, you know, more of these social uh, law and order kinds of dynamics in the middle, uh, group loyalty, social identity, uh, et cetera. 
breaking out in more detail some of these social dynamics and how the the different forces are. So this in-group, out-group, uh, this respect for authority that we talked about, this kind of dominance hierarchy, uh, and then purity and sanctity, this sort of uh, other set of important kind of socially communicated and uh, regulated uh, motivations about, you know, what's proper, what's the what's what's a decent thing to do in these kind of social conventions, unpacking what it means to, to have that kind of conventional set of uh, rules and principles about how you should behave in a society.